Welcome back to the news at 10. Uh, to more health news now, that breastfeeding has scientifically proven health benefits for both mother and child is in, not in doubt. The bone of contention, however, has always been how to achieve the six months exclusive breastfeeding and continuing with complementary food up to two years of age as recommended by the World Health Organization. Well, on our Focus on Health tonight, our correspondent Yomi Otaigwe takes a look at how Nigerian mothers can be supported in their efforts to make exclusive breastfeeding possible. Education starts from the antenatal class where pregnant women are enlightened on safe motherhood and how to care for the baby after birth, especially in the area of nutrition. The National Demographic and Health Survey 2008 indicates that only 13% of children under six months are exclusively breastfed. Several other reports, including the Save the Children and UNICEF State of the Child's report, show that exclusive breastfeeding in Nigeria is on a downward trend, and this throws the debate out in the open. These days, we know that in the hospital they make it compulsory for, for uh, pregnant women that when you born this child, you breastfeed a lot. But is that what we find? No, we don't find it. The challenges to breastfeeding is uh, more that one of them is mothers returning to work very early, like the three months, once the three months mentality expires, many of them now start mixing the breast milk with the infant formula because the babies have to eat even in their absence. Then secondly, you know this day because of the economy, many mothers are not really eating well. And they will come and tell you that their breasts are not uh, lactating. Most mothers are said to be favorably disposed to breastfeeding, but achieving this exclusively for six months is their Herculean task. The milk is not coming out. The baby is just crying, the milk is not enough, but I think it starts with positioning and attachment from birth. Like we said, first 30 minutes after birth, the child, the baby must be put to breast. And that starts with the technique and the skills which they must learn. Try avoid the baby putting the mouth or suckling just the nipple, but the black area, that's the areola, such that most of it is in the baby's mouth. The lower lip of the baby is in the outward position and the mouth of the baby is wide open enough to cover the black area. We, we all know that maybe some mothers will not be there at all times or may have to get back to work. In that situation, to do it exclusively, you need to express the mark. You get like a stainless steel, wash your hands, obviously. Hygiene is very key. And make sure your hand is clean and the bowl and everything you're gonna use is clean. And then you pray, use it, do it manually because of, to, to prevent infection. The pump is, the breast pump is also okay if you're ready to keep it, you're sure you're gonna keep it very clean. But at times we advise you could do it manually to avoid any form of infection. And the milk can stay out of the refrigerator for seven hours. Because the, the people say uh, the baby is gonna be thirsty. The milk contains all the water the baby needs. And the baby does not need to be given water. And that should be done exclusively, only breast milk for six months. I will put it like that. Many mothers have also come to say, after six months or even close to two years, the baby does not want to eat any other thing except the breast milk, except the breast milk. And I, but I think they just, obviously the child has been used to the breast milk. So it takes time and must be gradual to introduce other things like other foods to the baby. So the mothers need to be patient. If you take your time, prepare complimentary foods for them, whatever the family is eating, mash it as much as possible so that they can eat it till they can start eating something more solid. The child would, would take other things apart from breast milk. Aside from the baby having optimal growth and health, a breastfeeding mother also has rewards from nature for her efforts. It's been proven that when you breastfeed your baby, the baby is going to be very intelligent. People say so, the one that did not breastfeed will not be intelligent. It doesn't mean, they're not saying that I won't be intelligent, but the ones that are breastfed exclusively are very intelligent. 
when you when you use bottles or other other formula and all that, then you, you attract a lot of infection to the baby. But when the baby is on breast milk alone, you don't need to start worrying about um, infection or whatever. Then it's also been proven that it reduces um, infection because of the uh, on the area of um, they don't fall ill often. They had they, they rarely have um, things like um, respiratory tract infection, diarrhea, and all that. And then it also helps the mother. She's in shape most of the time. It's in, it's in the right temperature. You don't even have to start thinking of, I need to warm the food, I need to get hot water. You just rest with the baby like that. A mother would do it successfully, effectively, for six months with the support of every person around the mother. And that starts with someone like the father. They need to be able to assist them at home when necessary so that they can, they can rest and do and face the baby and breastfeed the baby well. They need to even provide enough for them so they are not under pressure to go under the sun or run around uh, like two months with your baby trying to get something to eat or for your baby. So if you can provide reasonably for them, they will not be under pressure. To encourage working mothers to breastfeed, government and private organizations need to incorporate baby-friendly initiatives such as the provision of breastfeeding rooms and creches in workplaces as it is done in other parts of the world. Yomi Otaiwe reporting for Channels Television News. It's time for sports news now. Ayo Tunde Balogun is standing by to tell us what's happening with the CAF Confederations Cup. Well, yes, Amarich, interesting news for Nigerian club sides in that competition as Warrior Wolves and Bielsa United got off their campaign in the CAF Confederations Cup to a bright start. Now, Warrior Wolves in Douala defeated hosts Union Douala by three goals to two in the first leg of the first round of the prestigious competition. Goals from Musa Najare, Ogene Kare, Tabo and Ike Chukwibinegu ensured that Warrior Wolves gained their victory over their Cameroonian counterparts. Bielsa United on their part snatched a nil-nil draw at AS Konzu of Congo Brazzaville despite a delayed arrival in the Central African country. Now, the return leg is slated for Nigeria in a week's time with the overall winners advancing to the second round of the competition. Chelsea pulled four points clear at the top of the English Premier League after Andre Schoeller hit a hat trick against bottom of the table Fulham in a London derby. After a goalless first half, it took the German only 16 minutes between his first and third strikes, twice combining with Chelsea playmaker Eden Hazard, the Belgian international. First, his clip pass over the top played Schoeller in front of Dan Byrne before the German slotted past Martin Stecklenburg the Fulham goalkeeper. The pair then combined again when Hazard dinked Schiller into the penalty area for a simple chance before Torres repeated the trick, setting up his fellow forward for his sixth goal of the season. Well, in other English Premier League games, Luis Suarez scored his 24th Premier League goal of the season as the Merseyside outfit Liverpool defeated Southampton three goals to nil at St Mary's to leapfrog Arsenal into the second spot. Well, Arsenal may have lost a little bit of ground in the title race after Jonathan Walters' penalty earned Stoke City a priceless 1-0 victory at the Britannia Stadium. Everton climbed up to sixth place in the table after battling past West Ham United thanks to Romelu Lukaku's late goal at Goodison Park. Musa Sissoko scored, or scored a goal in each half as Newcastle United beat Hull City by four goals to one at the KC Stadium. The Newcastle boss, Alan Pardew, was sent to the stands after appearing to have headbutt David Miller in the 72nd minute following a tussle on the touchline. Now to some tennis where Roger Federer ended a nine-month title drought as he beat Thomas Burdich 3-6-6-4-6-3 to claim the ATP Dubai title in 1 hour 58 minutes. Now the Swiss counterparts or the Swiss superstars last win came in Howell last summer 
and that triumph in a small event was his only victory of the entire 2013 season. But his performance in today's final, not to mention his gutsy win over Novak Djokovic in the semis, erased the memories of his longest winless spell in 13 years. It was a 78th career title, but only his second ATP title in 18 months. And that's in the sports news. The news at 10. Really shortly. Away from sports news on the foreign scene, Russian troops will be making their way to Ukraine anytime soon to restore what President Vladimir Putin has described as normalcy to the capital, Kiev. A parliament approved of President Putin's request as protesters in Kiev have been reacting angrily to days of military movements in Crimea. They accused Russia of trying to provoke the new government into an armed conflict. Russia's Black Sea Fleet is based in the Ukrainian region of Crimea, where many ethnic Russians live. They are reported to be guarding some administrative buildings and military bases. Ukrainian Defense Minister Ihor Teni. Tenyok says there are now an extra 6,000 Russian troops in the Crimea, alongside an additional 30 armored vehicles. In the meantime, interim president Oleksandr Tuchinov has called an emergency session of his security chiefs. Well, finally tonight, you don't need sneakers or the gym to get a little exercise. It's been found. U.S. President Barack Obama and his vice, Joe Biden, had just confirmed this in a recent workout in uh, President uh, Obama's office in the White House. And the pair took a uh, part in a fitness video as part of uh, First Lady Michelle Obama's Let's Move campaign, an initiative to fight childhood obesity and encourage healthy lifestyle, first launched in 2010. It's another day in the White House. The U.S. President Barack Obama sits at his desk, perhaps signing another executive order. And his vice, Joe Biden, then walks in. Let's do this thing. Let's move. Despite their busy schedule, they both found time for a quick jog. The two top executives don't off in their office clothes, their ties and all, showing off their let's move skills through the hallways of the White House. While this lasted, Obama's pet dogs, Bo and Sonny, couldn't help but look on. <laughs> At the end of the workout, both toast to good health with glasses of water, a better way to finish a healthy exercise session. Same time next week? Same time next week. <laughs> Obama and Biden seem to suggest to world leaders that even with the busiest of schedules, they can still find time to exercise in the office environment. How are you? Can I shake your hand? In the office, anywhere, just keep moving. And the main news again. Unconfirmed reports have said that about 10 people have died after two bombs went off in Meduguri, the Bono state capital. A sultan of Sokoto and the Bongwam of Joss have solicited a collaborative effort in the fight against terrorism. And all students of Unity schools have asked for a relocation of students in eight Unity colleges in Nigeria's emergency states. Russia's parliament has approved President Putin's request to deploy troops in Ukraine. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.